So the solution to this integral here is quite remarkable. I mean, it requires us to use power series and all sorts of weird calculus stuff, but I think it'll be just best for me to show it to you guys. So what do I want to do here? First of all, I'd like to rewrite my integral in such a way that, well, it makes sense to deal with, yeah? <laughs> so I would like to call my integral i first of all, and now I would like to rewrite it as this integral will steal from zero to half of the pi of, and now one by tangent is just cosine by sine, so I can write this thing as just cosine of x multiplied by the natural log of this secant of x, this is going to be all divided, it's going to be all divided by sine of x is going to be all with respect to x. And now it's time for the use up here. Why do, I, why do I want to make a use up? Well, I want to make a use up because this secant in the natural log here is 1 over cosine. So I've got cosine times the natural log of 1 over cosine. If I set u, let's say u equal to the cosine of x, I might get something interesting out of it. So let's try and do it. So u being equal to cosine of x will imply that du be negative sine of x dx, or in other words, dx becoming eventually negative u, oh, wait, negative du by the square root of 1 minus u squared by some true identities. And as to the bounds of integration, whenever x goes to 0, u is going to be cosine of 0, which is a 1. Whenever x is equal to pi by 2, u is going to 0. So we've got this new lovely integral, this new lovely integral from 1 to 0. We'll fix it in a little bit of u times the natural log of 1 by u, everything divided by that square root of 1 minus u squared. That's exactly what's called si what the sign in the denominator happens to be after my u sub there, and then times my negative, or rather we've that parenthesis, negative du divided by once again the square root of 1 minus u squared. I love it because those two square roots are going to just combine each, are going to just combine and become um, one of minus u squared without the square root anymore. And I can also use this negative sign here to flip those bounds of integration. This 0 becomes a 1, this 1 becomes a 0. Awesome. I can rewrite my integral in a simplified version as this integral between 0 and 1 of u times the natural log of the reciprocal of u divided by 1 minus u squared du. And now, well, I would like to evoke the power series because this 1 over minus u squared factor it looks like the sum of the geometric sum. I mean, it really does, because as you probably remember from calculus, the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of x to the power of n is the same thing as 1 over 1 minus x. Whenever the absolute value of whenever the absolute value of x is less than 1, and it is in this case because we are integrating over the interval of 0 and 1, so no problems with convergence whatsoever. I would like to write this thing then using that power series stuff as the integral between 0 and 1 of u, or I will, I will write this natural log of 1 over u as negative log of u, taking that exponent in front of the natural log. It's going to be negative my integral, negative my integral of u ln of u, and then times inserting that sum from above. It's going to be this sum as n goes from 0 to infinity of u to the power of 2 times n is going to be all and close with the du sign at the end. And now, I can take this u ln of u inside, oh no, inside of the sum operator. And why is it so? I can do it because this u ln of u is absolutely independent of the variable n. It does not depend on it being any certain value, so I can just plug it in the as if it was a constant. So let me do it. I will then get myself a negative of the integral from 0 to 1 of the sum, as n goes from 0 to infinity, of um, u to the power of 2n and then plus 1 and then the natural log of u, all the u. And now one more nice thing is that my integrand here is convergent in the bounds of integration that I have right here. And so there is no problem for me to just go on and interchange the order of summation. I can just integrate first and then sum up all of those little integrals together. Doesn't affect the eventual result that I'm going to get. So I would like to do it. I will switch up the order of summation. I will first of all integrate, which is that I will have the summation operator to the left. 
and then the integral from 0 to 1 of that u to the 2 and plus 1 and then times the natural log of u du. Love it. And now, well, I can deal with this using integration by parts. So what do I really want to do here? I would like to set this natural log here as my g, as my g, yeah, and this u to the n plus 1 as my f prime, so I will integrate u to the 2 n plus 1 and differentiate this ln of u, I think is a pretty straightforward just cho choice to make, to make. And so I'm gonna get this negative infinite sum as n goes from 0 um, of, first of all, is going to be u to the 2n plus 2 times ln of u, all divided by 2n plus 2 in the bounds of 0 and 1, and then minus, or rather I will just use this negative sign here, pull it in front of the first time then, and then just make this negative sign right here become a plus sign, so I will be adding myself the second integral between 0 and 1 of u to the 2n plus 2 all over 2n plus 2 multiplied by the reciprocal of u, which is the derivative of ln of u, like this. Now, whenever you plug in u equal to 1 inside of the first fraction here, it will become a 0. However, when you plug in a zero, it is, well, quite an undefined form of zero times infinity. So let me just <coughs> calculate this limit, little, um, this little limit very quickly. So it's going to be the limit as u goes to zero of just the, oh, let's say natural log by u to the negative two minus two. I, I just took this u3, 2n plus 2, and divided 1 by it, and then divided the natural log by 1 by u3, 2n plus 2, just so I have the undetermined form of infinity over infinity, and I could use the Lobitus rule now. So I'm going to differentiate both the numerator and the denominator. I would, I'm going to get 1 by u here, and then some constants times u to the negative n minus, no, negative Three, like this. This is going to give me the limit as n, no, no, n, as u goes to zero of uh, u to the two n plus two divided by all those constants. It's just going to approach zero. So this entire thing here just goes to zero. Don't really care about it. And now we can finally finish this problem off. So this thing here, what is it going to be? I could just take out this 2n plus 2 in front of the integral altogether. I don't really care about it. And then I'm going to get u to the 2n plus 1 power. Well, integrating it using the power rule is going to is gonna just give me u to the 2n plus 2 by 2n plus 2. I can take out the 2n plus 2 and plug in those bounds of 1 and 0. 0 gives me a 0. And I probably should have written it instead of just saying it out loud. But I, I, I hope you're going to... Uh, Forgive me doing that. Yes, yeah, so it's gonna be the sum of one over of one over two n plus two, and then that one oh not one, but u to the two n plus two by two n plus two in the bounds of zero and one, which is just one over two n plus two. I can just take and uh, I can just go on and erase all that stuff all together and then just square this guy out. Awesome. And so what I'm going to really get here, and I would also like to get rid of those twos and just pull out a one quarter in front of this sum. I'm going to get one quarter times that sum as n goes from zero to infinity of this one over n plus one all squared. Now, I would like to shift the indices here. I would like to start summing up with a one, and then I'm going to just be summing over n squared instead of n plus one squared. And what I'm really left with is one quarter of the basal sum, which is this pretty famous of a sum of uh, 1 over n squared from n equal to 0 up to infinity, which, as I proved on this channel a few weeks back, I guess, uh, evaluates to pi squared by 6, and so this thing will eventually become pi squared by 4 times 6, which is 24, like this. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and see you in the next one.